Okay, hello guys. Um, we are going to do an educational video. Uh, it's an educational video understanding planes. So there will be two concepts that we're going to be dealing with, which is uh, surface closest point, and from that evaluate surface. It's a very important tool because dealing with planes can be really challenging. For instance, we know that it's easy to create a plane in the xy direction or the z direction, but what happens if it's at, a, at an off angle? So you can see in this command, it always makes sure that the, that the plane is perpendicular to the surface. And we'll even get into uh, using the graph mapper to lay uh, geometries and, and show how uh, the, 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 the geometry is perpendicular to the surface. So that this is a really good tool is that especially when you're thinking about your designs, uh, you're thinking about how it relates to uh, irregular surfaces. So this is a really powerful command and uh, it's going to be covered in, in most of, uh, uh, most of the uh, videos. So let's start a new one and let's get to work. Okay, so let's start a brand new file. I'm going to hit Control N. I always like to work in millimeters. And then I am going to make a new grasshopper canvas. And I'm first going to put in my bifocals. I am going to make a surface in the XY direction. Let me go into. I'm going to go to shaded and I am going to get a surface component. I'm going to get the area. And one thing to remember about Grasshopper is that they have analysis tools no different than what's in uh, Rhino. So in Rhino, we can do the area centroid command. And when I click on this, let me hide that. It put the point in the center. So Grasshopper is basically doing the same thing with this area component. So that is one of the things to be aware of. I'm going to do a line SDL. So the line is going to start at the centroid. I'm going to go in the Z direction, uh, the length. I'm going to put a slider. I'm going to, I'm working in millimeters. So let me put it in 1200. So let me go with the length. And then I'm going to go with my vector. My vector display, oh, whoops. Vector display. So the vector display is just showing where the arrow is going. So the anchor is at the start, it's at the centroid of the surface, and then the vector is the line, and voila. So you see we are able to project a line off this surface because, because it's perpendicular. Now, let's see what happens when I turn this. Nothing is happening. The, the area is still being accounted for. This hasn't changed. I've just changed it to all sorts of weird angles. But you can see that this line is never perpendicular with the surface. It's only perpendicular when it's in the xy direction. So to think about this, the best way to think about is uh, this is this vector is always projecting perpendicular from the surface. So when I'm using this command, just simply projecting a line and showing the vector, 
it's it's not it's 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 not showing accurately what would happen when I t change the surfaces. So let's start. Let's select the surface. Set one surface. So I'm gonna do the same commands as I did the last one. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna type in surface closest point. So I am going to select this surface and this point. And then I am going to evaluate the surface. And this is where I am able to, to basically align my uh, line perpendicular to this. And now you can even see from from the geometry, the plane is, is lying perpendicular to this. And if I change it, it keeps on moving. So we've created this good scenario where the, the surface and the plane is always uh, in alignment with, with, one, with one another. And with this, we can do some, uh, some wonderful things. So let's, I'm gonna copy this line SDL component so I'm going to start at, let's see, the point. I want to make the direction normals. So, or what about, hold on. Oh, sorry. This is frozen. Vector display. Vector. Oops. Nope. Okay, and now you see the vector is now perpendicular to the surface. Now let me unhide the surface. You can see whenever I rotate and use your gumball tool, uh, you can always see that it is always perpendicular to this. So that's a good thing. So now let's let's do some interesting stuff. So let me just erase. Uh, actually, I can keep part of this. Actually, you know, it's, be it's actually better to start from scratch. Okay, let me let me draw like a like an overhang. Let's let's draw an overhang and let's uh, manipulate it with uh, Cage Edit. And I do have uh, a lecture on Cage Editing. It's a uh, it's a pretty powerful tool. Uh, so. Okay, so I'm going to take this. So I have a little little overhang. So I'm going to type in cage edit. I'm going to do the bounding box. I'm going to I'm going to hit enter again. I'm going to just take those points as defaults. I want to just just articulate this, maybe. Yeah, so something, oops. Okay, let's see what happens if I, nope. Okay, so I made some little interesting shapes. So let's let's do some interesting things, and we're gonna cover a lot of commands that are also in Rhino, that are analysis tools. So let me select the surface. Uh, I first want to divide the surface. 
Let me turn this on. I'll hide this. Divide surface. Let's see. Let's get a slider. I'm going to go to numerical. Let me do 36. Okay, so it's a little bit dense. Okay, so it's going to be the same thing, but this time I'm going to do surface closest point. I'm, I'm going to take all of the points that are on the surface. Uh, in the previous example, we were, we were just taking a centroid, just one point. So now we're going to take numerous points. So I, I get that surface. I get the points. I want to evaluate the surface again. So I go point to UV point surface. Now, now you can see from the planes, they are being perpendicular to the surface. But I need to, first of all, reduce the size of my plane. So I go to display, preview plane size. Let me put it 55. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing, line SDL. So I'm going to get one of these sliders, maybe increase the number to 1200. Okay, so the direction, the frame, start, the point. Okay, I want to expression Oops. okay wait hold on expression whoops I'm going to change the exp whoops expression to negative X so we have some condition that's happening on the surface. And one of the conditions that we can already see is that there are lines going up and down. So we have some lines that are going down and we have some other lines also that are also going down. So, but we're not gonna get into that. We wanna show the vector display. So we want to show that the lines are projecting perpendicular to, to the, the points. Yeah, so, so you can see that the points are all coming out of the surface. And you can see that we can do maybe something like extrude along curve. Let's see. Uh, let me know. Oops. There's a strude. Uh, okay, I'm going to make a hexagon. Or, oh, polygon, that's what I want to do, polygon. So the plane, uh, oops. Radius, I'm going to make the radius. Oops, no, no, it's not what, what, what I want to do. And then and then let me do my preview, custom preview. So now you can see that all the points are projecting perpendicular. You know, I can make this less dense. 
with the design with the divide surface command. Right now it's looking like a porcupine. So this is an important tool and we're gonna go next into uh, we're gonna analyze a geometry and put a graph mapper. Okay, so let's do another scenario. So I'm just gonna take this surface and I'm gonna copy it because I, I want to use that. I'm gonna just hide this. So now I'm gonna do my box bounding command and you'll see what I'm gonna do with that command. In my other lessons, I do show what the box bounding, bounding command does, especially in the realm of flowing along surface, but you'll see what I will do with this command in Grasshopper. So I'm gonna bound the box. I'm gonna do brep explode, deconstruct. And what I wanna do is I wanna grab an edge and create some, uh, some intersections. So I'm gonna go to list item, slider, there are 12 sides. Okay, so I'm going to divide that curve. I want to maybe make 25 units. I want to create a situation where I can basically get these intersections. So I'm going to go to B rep plane. I want this geometry I want to just hide hide these elements okay so I want to evaluate these curves. I want to reparametrize, and I'm going to, I'm going to use a graph mapper, and you'll see what I will do. I'm going to get a range component list length. So oops, and then I want to flatten this and 24 values. I need to use an expression editor. I want to go X minus one. Okay. So you can see I am creating a graph mapping situation. So let me go to parabola. Let me let me update this curve. Hold on one second. Let me Let me just cage edit bounding box. So I want to just just manipulate this a little bit. Uh, Okay, let me re-link this surface. Okay. 
Okay, so what you can see is that the points on the on the curves are resembling the graph mapper condition. So we have to subtract by one in the domain because it's the only way to get uh, 18 coordinates. Uh, and one of the things that we're doing is that we're reparametrizing the, the, the points, meaning zero to one gets the entire length of the curve. So what we can do is we can still do the evaluate uh, surface command. Uh, so let's go to surface closest point. Oops. Okay. So we know the surface is this thing. We know the point is that. Evaluate surface. So I'm going to the UV point. I'm going to get to the circle. Let's do the line SDL command. So start frame direction slider. Okay, so you can see they're pointing down. Hold on. Let me increase this to 200. So it's pointing down. Let me do the expression editor. Negative x, so it goes in the opposite direction. So you can see the lines are pointing upwards. Let's put a vector angle. Uh, vector display. So this is the vector. The anchor is right here. So you can see the vectors are going in that direction. And if I want to change my graph, let's say graph type Bezier. You can see and let me just let me just let me just hide this. That's a little bit confusing. So you can see it's it's operating in this way. So now let's do let's put a polygon. Let's do that. Plane radius. Let's, ex let's extrude along. Oops. Curve base color preview. Custom preview. You know what? Let me cap this. So I have this capped. I'm going to hide these for the points. I want to interpolate them because I want to pipe it. Pipe. Then custom preview. Let me go to swatch. So you can see I was able to create these planes that align with the perpendicular uh, nature of a of a complex curve. So you can see that it is that this command is extremely useful. Uh, 
it can make your life a lot easier in terms of uh, trying to arrange uh, geometries on irregular surfaces and a lot of my tutorials will be highlighting this command and you'll see more of it. Thank you.